I have been blessed to know our special guest who's here with us today uh, for 20 years when he first started with Keller Williams and it's been very impressive the work he's done in the last 20 years at Keller Williams. Currently, he has eight offices with Keller Williams, 1,500 souls on board, 1,500 realtors, and volume annually about three and a half billion, that's with a B. Rick, welcome to Personal Professional Best. Thanks, Pat, glad to be here. Yep, so listen, um, as the founder of Keller Williams Heart of Atlanta, Obviously, I just shared, you started in 1999, you've had a very, very impressive run. Did you ever imagine when you got there and got started that it would turn out like this? By honest admission, I don't think so. Not to the level and extent that it is to suggest we've impacted 1,500 lives and create an environment where they can shine and you know take care of their families the way I would wanna take care of mine. It's just a gift and a blessing. You do the right thing and the right people show up, I think is the moral of that story, but no, I really didn't. So you do the right thing, show up every day. That's Just it. Just keep doing the right thing and show it up every day. And all of a sudden, right, it turns out to something fabulous. I That's think it. sometimes those simple things in life, you know, when I talk to the best people, no matter what industry they're in, <clears throat> they seem to get back to that. You know, they wake up every day and there's some bedrock principles that drive them. So when you think about the, the things that have happened in the last 20 years, the successes, obviously, as we've shared in terms of numbers, what are those bedrock principles that you've learned um, from a leadership standpoint that have not only made you successful personally, professionally, but the business itself? What are those one or two things that you just absolutely can't negotiate? Well, one is being in business with the right people. I think the quality of my life is directly tied to the quality of the people in it. And when you're in business with the right people, it's self-correcting on some level. Um, I've made plenty of mistakes, but with the right people, there's always a remedy, a solution, and a lesson. And when you lean into that as the opportunity, things get better and it's really magnified quickly. So people would be number one. The second thing is just work ethic. And um, I think when you suit up and show up every day, like you alluded early on, you chop wood, eventually you show up with a big stack of wood. And uh, our group consistently chops wood and creates great bonded, awesome relationships. And the third thing, I'll add a third, is uh, being attached to a company with systems and models so that it's not nebulous and how you achieve, it's just how you go about achieving using the systems and tools effectively. And uh, as much as I'm a, I'd like to think I'm a rebel and a, a kind of run rawhide sometimes and don't like rules and, and regs, at the end of the day, proven principles prove, are, are they're proven principles for a reason. And when you apply them and then you put your personality and authenticity behind it, great things happen. And Keller Williams was that for me. I love it. It certainly is a great organization, obviously the biggest in the world, right, at doing yeah. what they do for a living. Um, but it really does get down to kind of what's happening on a local level, right? Because the best operating systems in the world, absent the culture and the things that go on in a business every day that motivate and inspire the people. You know, I heard what you said, and most people sitting in the audience may say, hey, I'm working really hard. But the thing I heard or didn't hear was profit. I heard people. And yeah. we've always said in our organization that when, when our purpose is people and making a difference in the lives of other people and we work really hard, the byproduct is profit. It sounds it like is. you are it exactly is. the same in terms of alignment. Yeah, I am. And it's, it's performance-based metrics that you live in, but it's people-based experiences that keep the fuel and the fire going. It's not that we don't need to make money for a living, right? No, money's important, <laughs> but money's only good for the good that it does. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with that yeah. completely. So. You know, the folks that, um, that travel like you do that have um, reached a certain you know, level, if you will, of success in life, they always have a person or two or three people in their life that are those unique voices of influence. I mean, we run into people every single day, but then there's those people, right, yeah. that, that change our lives. They give us things that we keep with us for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Um, who are those people with you? The list is extremely long. Um, I'll touch on three or four really quick one and briefly. One would be my father. He's just an amazing success story. Um, he also confronted me in my early 20s and suggested that I lacked failure in my life. And at the time, I thought I was succeeding relative to my peer group and my friends. But what he meant by it was that I wasn't succeeding at the level of my capacity uh, or my potential. And although it was a kick in the teeth and it was disappointing to hear from somebody I desperately wanted to impress, um, it, it resonated with me to the extent when my opportunity came and I saw the, the again, growing businesses and building something big, um, 
I felt like it's the risk, the chance, the failure that really defines who you are. And so that was a big deal, and he was a big, uh, a big influence on me. Another would be Sean Rawls. Um, we were contemporaries and competing agents in, in a prior company before Keller Williams, and he was the first one to tap me on the shoulder and make me aware of this amazing company um, and invited me to the inner circle for an opportunity in Sandy Springs, and that forever changed my life. Um, he's such a spark plug and such an amazing, brilliant human being. So he's a, and a great friend at this point. So beyond that, I'd say Bob Kalinske's mentor for life, Kay Evans, an amazing, inspired mm -hmm. person who's always held me accountable like nobody, in fact, more so than my mother, I'm <laughs> absolutely certain. Um, and for that, I'm grateful. And also, um, Gary Keller himself. I was in a mastermind in 2001 with Gary Keller and um, the enlightenment he brought to the experience and taking everything that, that felt, again, the people puzzle is vital, but there's also underbelly structure and there's systems and tools. And he explained the 80-20 principle and how you apply time and energy. And um, he even brought a system for hiring, which we call career visioning, that changed my life in terms of being able to attract talent and make sure they're aligned not only just philosophically and, and intellectually, but also um, skills, just basic skills and, and career trajectory so that we're aligned. So I'm grateful for Gary for so many things, and I'm grateful that he's back in the saddle swinging hard. Well, I want to thank <clears throat> your dad, and I want to thank um, uh, Sean, and I want to thank Kay, and I want to thank Gary because of what they did investing in you. Yeah. There's now 1,500 lives um, that are different, and all the people that are involved with them, including ours, as a partner with you because they helped their voices of influence help shape who you are today and of course that now is spreading to all the people that are in your life and what a wonderful blessing and it's a great reminder to all of us that the people that are in our lives sometimes we get so busy that we don't make enough room um, to invest and use our voice of influence in the lives of others whether it's at home with our kids right because we're so That's busy right. with business and everything else we don't need to miss those moments with those people that are in our lives, whether it's at home or in the workplace. We need to make sure that we continue to make a difference. Make sure you thank the whole crowd. I'm sure you have in the past, yeah. but uh, maybe Often. you leave in today because it's just a time to stop and be reminded. Often. All right, so our program's all about becoming the best, best version of who we can be, right? Personally and professionally. Um, and there's people in the audience today, when they see people like you, who have achieved a tremendous amount of success, not only in your professional life, but in your personal life as well. Um, I think sometimes people feel like, but they haven't had the same struggles that I've had. They've not faced mm -hmm. off an adversity like I have. Um, but what I know is true is, is that people like yourself face a very similar set of challenges, struggles, their own unique, and adverse, adversity is a part of all of our lives. People that are, wind up becoming their best, they just simply, they learn how to adapt to the circumstances and conquer the adversity. Give us a story of something that's happened where you've had to conquer adversity in your life. Yeah, that's not difficult. I mean, again, with the, in the spirit of failing forward, um, one thing comes to mind. Um, in 2006 or seven, I decided I wanted to be, become a developer. And so I partnered with a couple of people who I felt were skilled at their end of the bargain and deal. And I brought some real estate prowess and uh, we spent about a million, six or seven, and then escalated some other expenses, well over two million. The market shifted. They chose to take a strategic default as, uh, as the process or, the, or the, out, the direction they wanted to go with it. Hired a high powered attorney to defend us and uh, it went wrong. I mean, it went really wrong. Um, and I woke up, so there's words in a, in a loan document, we all sign loan documents, and it jointly and severably don't seem very, uh, they seem innocuous until you actually understand the magnitude of all of that landing on you. So when things went wrong, I had a $2.2 million um, uh, judgment weight levy. Came back to you. Yeah. And so the lesson one, choose your partners wisely and make sure you have a controlling voice if it's something significant. And secondly, um, don't let attorneys tell you how to manage your affairs when it's a people puzzle. And so once things went wrong, I immediately rolled up my sleeves, just you know, separated out of that situation and um, started meeting directly with the bank. And we worked out a resolution that created a, an awesome win-win. Uh, it was an expensive lesson. But I'm equipped now to share if anyone wants to know what not to do in developing property and land and, and the misfortune of timing. <laughs> 
I bet I'm overqualified. <laughs> I'm overqualified. When you said 2006, I was like, that it wasn't a wrong. good time. Right? It went exactly. wrong. <laughs> and when things are going really, really good at any business, that's not necessarily the best time to be an investor yeah. in that business, right? It's not. But I'll tell you this, if you want to inspire and motivate and, and, and engage with people, um, it's your detriment that's usually the biggest magnet. It's your situational um, experience that aligns with their dysfunction or their concern or their nervousness about something that allows them to let down their guard long enough to let authentic energy um, permeate the conversation and get real. Yeah, and you know, there's people in the audience today that are <clears throat> facing off on adversity in life or have had it and dragging with them. Do know that was a difficult time for you. You got through it, made all the right choices to get through it. And the other thing that we would recommend to you, because I've talked to a lot of people who've achieved their best is don't create your own adversity through making poor choices, right? There's enough adversity in life. If you make all the wise choices, you'll avoid it. You'll still get some, and then you'll do hopefully what Rick did, which is persevere through it. Yeah, there's a solution to every dilemma. I mean, there's an outcome that can be there favorable is. if you work for it. There is, yeah. Sometimes you just have to go through that season, right? But That's those it. seasons tend to make us better in the aftermath because no we've now learned, we've acquired a skill, which is because it'll show back up at some point in a different form in our life. We just now know that we can conquer it. Yeah. Um, so what are you currently working on right now, your personal life or your professional life to get better? So my mission the last two or three years is just to figure out what I'm gonna do for the next season. So part of what I'm working on is um, the evolution of me. And it's, uh, I've mastered aspects of my job and there's days I wake up and realize I still have a tremendous amount to master. But I'm, my goal is to find inspiration outside of just the corporate world. So I'm investing a lot of time with philanthropy and with charitable organizations that really tailor and cater to kids and teens. And um, I'm excited about that season. So I'm working on my network so that I can apply, you know, either um, just either wealth or, you know, money or experience and time to help further their their cause. And so that's been really the, the big one. The other is even professionally, I've invested. I have a, an education budget this year, and I share this not in a bragging sense, but that I have a $35,000 education budget to just travel and network with high net worth, high successful, high-minded, socially conscious people. And my goal is to, to expose myself to those people so that I'll have something to bring back. And my sure. simple philosophy is, Life's about it. growing to yourself to the extent you can and then giving it all back as often as possible. And you can only give away what you have. And so my goal is to continue to um, connect with people and absorb what they have so that I have more to offer as a human being in pursuit of my best me. Awesome. That was probably as well said as it can be. We have a sign on the back of our wall here that says complacency is the enemy of best. And what I just heard you say and challenge all of us to do is to continue to work to get better, sharpen our skills, meet with other people who have different experiences and different skills than we do and, and import those, right? Because That's then right. everybody in our life benefits they as do. a result of it. They and do. thanks also for, for the uh, work that you're doing <clears throat> from a charitable standpoint, because making the world a better place, guys like you, skills with, um, that you have, resources that you have that you can bring to the market, um, whatever that looks like in whatever area it is, um, it's making the world a better place and we appreciate you doing that. I got a different question now. <laughs> Same theme about getting better. What are you not working on today <laughs> that you need to be working on? What's that thing, right? When you wake up in the morning, you're like, I know I need to get to that, but I'm not working on it yet. What is that thing in your life? It's not that I'm not working on it. I'm just not working on it at the level that I should or could, and that's just health and fitness. Um, I do a pretty good job, and uh, the running joke is for a heavy set guy, I'm pretty darn athletic, and that's a, uh, a limiting belief and a statement that you know I've grown to tell myself being perfectly candid. And uh, that's not the future I want. And it's not the, the formula to live to 120, which is my goal. So I'm, I'm banking on some modern medicine. <laughs> if you make it past 120, you'll be like biblical. Yeah. Well, it's not that. I think modern medicine, you never know. Sure. We cure a couple right. of, of you know, things that seem to recur and you know, who knows? So I'm an optimistic thinker, which works for me. And sometimes I have to be careful, but it's just more intentionality around daily health and fitness, not, you know, hey, it's Monday, it's time to get serious again, which is common in my world. Well, you look great and you're not you're alone. Kind. I mean, uh, you know, when we get to, you know, to, to uh, adulthood, you get busy at work, you're successful, you have four children, right? So there's I just do. an awful lot of time that's already spoken for with just the demands on your job and the demands and family. And so finding that other time uh, to do all of those things that are necessary to keep our health and fitness, that's just a pretty common theme that people have. So we'll um, make sure that we send you a regular email through our 
personal professional best program to encourage that would Rick be awesome. Hale to get back on the program, right? <laughs> yeah, the power of accountability. The is power of accountability. I'll actually call Kay Evans when we leave here and tell her to oh, start boy. dialing you up on the regular. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Kay earlier. Uh, um, Kay, when I first met Kay uh, in my career, she scared me to death. She was running education for the Board of Realtors and she called me and said, come see me. And it was like, okay. Mm -hmm. And I went to see her and she had her glasses down looking at me and she said, you're going to participate in helping me get the education right for the finance part, my job. And I was like, oh no, I don't want to be there. <laughs> I'm afraid if I do something wrong, right, you're going to get your red pen out with me. <laughs> yeah. But she's, uh, she's an amazing person for that reason and many others because she has a way of just uh, showing up and bringing that level of accountability. So I'm glad that you brought her up. It's uh, a she, blessing to have her in your world when you want things done and you she, want them done well. She's a very, very, very special person. All right. So you're talking to um, your four boys. You're talking to somebody else's boys or girls, 1,500 that work with you every day. You're talking to a number of people who don't know you that are in our audience today that are both realtors, mortgage bankers, and also friends and family of us that follow our program. Give them one piece, two pieces of advice, just life advice, if they want to become their best, and everybody does, but give them some advice in life. What are those one or two things that you just think, not business, but just in general? I, my best advice is just find something you're passionate about because you're less likely to quit. And the secret to succeeding in any industry, especially in our businesses, is just tenacity and, and, and grasping that it's a people puzzle and it's about solving mysteries and solving people's issues and challenge. Um, but grit is the word that comes to mind. And I think when I think grit, I think passion and I think um, nonstop or, or an inability to waver or waffle from what you want to accomplish. And so people start often and don't finish often. And so what is it that's passionate, that you're passionate enough about either personally or for the people around you that drives you to keep pursuing the that goal? You won't quit. Yeah, that you won't quit. It's really that simple. Don't stop. Don't quit. Uh, and, and Conjunction with that thought, I mean, I think a B plus idea that's executed beats an A plus idea on the shelf all day long. Mm -hmm. And people are, are trying, I find people often try really hard to have the perfect executable plan and don't execute. And so it's far better to wake up every day, swing at just about everything and, and then gauge that success. Don't just go back and swing at everything, but, but tomorrow maybe focus a little more intentionally around the things that work better for you. And then again, it's back to chopping wood, do it every day. It's amazing what happens. In our industry, the difference between average and superstar is a couple transactions a month. Wow. There are 7 million people. You can sell a house a month and make 60 or $70,000 a year. You can sell two to three houses and you're gonna make 200, 250. Life changing. I mean, it is. That's a whole different experience for you and your family. And again, 7 million people, you need two extra a month. You know, if you talk to 20 people a day, the odds are you find your two or three a month or five or more. You know, the more times that we talk to people like you that have really achieved an awful lot, and the more we ask that question, the more we get the same or similar answers, which is have passion for what you do um, so that you don't quit when obstacles show up, you continue. Um, and then get up every day, show up every day, chop wood every day, and work really hard. And people, I think, sometimes are looking for kind of the microwave solution, like there's a, there's a more brilliant idea waiting out there, but there are things that transcend time. And right. I think those principles that you just shared, they, they just transcend time, right? Have I passion do. and work yeah. really hard every single day, treat people really well. And you know, over time, all of a sudden you got a lot of wood, as you said, I love that yeah. idea. Yeah. <laughs> You've been chopping for a while and you got plenty of wood. That's it, man. You just keep working at it and eventually skill and talent line up, you know, if you practice often enough. And if you get enough wood, you can actually give wood away to your neighbors who don't have enough wood. That's right. Right. We yeah. can make the world a better place. Yeah. Right? Uh, abundant mindsets. Beautiful. So final question. So you've known me for a long time. We've worked together as partners for a long time. Um, you have your moment now. What do you see that I can do uh, to be better and more effective, not only in our partnership, but as a leader? I think you do a great job of a few things. One, for sure, is that you run a great organization, you attract talent. I've never had an experience with someone in your organization that I didn't find uplifting and inspired and, and enjoyable. So you just hire good people and they're also motivated and they're, they're honestly, they're go-getters, they chop wood. And it, whether it's systemic or the people, it's almost irrelevant when those come together because the right things show up and the right people stick around long enough to see the reward of that. So that's not a criticism, that's a compliment. Um, I just think when you have something good, you keep growing it. So 
don't stop. Keep growing it, keep attracting talent, keep inspiring people to think like this program forces you to stop and think about, because I think life's more than just a, a, a spreadsheet. I'm pretty sure my last day on earth won't be clutching a spreadsheet. I'll hopefully be clutching memories in the hearts of people that mattered, that contributed, that I also contributed to. Um, that's, that's it. So keep growing what you're doing and keep uh, the holistic approach to success and happiness to me is the, the key that unlocks the door to a big world. Well, thank you <clears throat> for not only being here but today, but thank you for what you just shared. It's encouraging because I'll continue to work even harder to make sure we get even better every single day and that I equip the people that I'm responsible for every day to do the same. Maybe what we'll both leave with then, because you asked for critique and it's not really critique, but a reflection. Um, thank you. Uh, gratitude wise for having the trust and confidence and being our partner of course. Um, and then you know we talked earlier about dad and about Sean and about Kay and about Gary um, why don't both of us just be um, leaving today with the idea that we need to make specifically and intentionally the idea of reaching out to those people that have made material difference in our lives voices of influence so that we can tell them thank you and that we can continue to work to create more people in our own audience that would someday, yeah. if they had the opportunity to sit in this chair, say, hey, I wanna thank Rick Hale for being that voice of influence in my life. Oh, that's a beautiful thought. Thank you. Yeah. Never, never met a truly grateful person that wasn't particularly happy. Yeah, that's true. Hey, listen, we thank all of you for uh, participating with us today. And Rick, again, thank you for taking your time. It's very generous of you to be here and to share uh, the secrets that have helped you become your very best. Thank you, Pat. It's beautiful. Thank you.